My name is Dr. Adam Farber, and I would like to present you a video demonstrating an arthroscopic rotator cuff repair. In order to understand this video, you must first understand basic shoulder anatomy. The shoulder is a ball and socket joint. The top of the arm or humerus is called the humeral head and comprises the ball of the ball and socket joint. The socket is known as the glenoid and is a portion of the shoulder blade or scapula. The rotator cuff is a series of four muscles and tendons that attach onto the humeral head. The subscapularis tendon is in front, the supraspinatus tendon is on top, and the infraspinatus and teres minor tendons are in the back of the shoulder. When viewed from the side, you can see how the rotator cuff tendons pass over the shoulder, much like the cuff of a shirt sleeve passes over your wrist. The subscapularis is in front, the supraspinatus is on top, and the infraspinatus and teres minor tendons are in the back of the shoulder. When the rotator cuff tears, a portion of the tendon detaches from the bony attachment on the humeral head, leaving a gap or hole in the rotator cuff, as is shown in this figure. There are two main spaces in the shoulder, represented by the blue areas in this diagram, from which the rotator cuff can be viewed. The undersurface of the rotator cuff can be seen from the joint space while looking up, as is represented by the yellow arrow in this diagram. The rotator cuff can also be viewed from the subacromial bursal space above the rotator cuff while looking down as is represented by the red arrow in this diagram. During rotator cuff repair surgery, both viewing perspectives are utilized. Here is a view of the shoulder anatomy from the first perspective in the joint space. In this diagram, the humeral head has been removed and you can see the glenoid socket denoted by the yellow circle. The biceps tendon indicated by the red arrow attaches to the top of the glenoid socket and the glenoid labrum shown by the green circle is a soft tissue ring which surrounds the glenoid socket. Arthroscopic rotator cuff repair surgery begins in the joint space. First, the top of the labrum is seen. Below that, the glenoid socket can be seen, as is shown here. Next to the glenoid socket is the humeral head, or the ball of the ball and socket joint. In the front of the shoulder, the normal subscapularis tendon can be seen. On top of the humeral head, you can see significant fraying in the area of the supraspinatus tendon attachment site. This is the rotator cuff tear in this video. An arthroscopic shaving device is inserted into the joint space to remove the frayed labral tissue. The humeral head is seen on the left, the glenoid is on the right, and the frayed labrum in the front and on top of the shoulder is cleaned up using the shaving device. Here the labrum on the top of the glenoid is removed. Then attention is taken towards the labrum in the front of the shoulder as is shown here. The shaver device is then inserted to clean up the frayed rotator cuff tissue in the area of the supraspinatus rotator cuff tear. After the frayed tissue has been removed, you can see the exposed rotator cuff footprint, which appears red in this image. This is the area of bone that the rotator cuff tendon should be attached to, but has torn off of. Next, the camera is moved to the second viewing space above the shoulder, known as the subacromial space. From this perspective, you can look down onto the top of the rotator cuff and up onto the overlying shoulder blade or acromion. The rotator cuff is the white soft tissue seen on the bottom portion of the monitor, while the acromial bone is the yellowish area seen on the top of the monitor. As the camera view is wide, you can see the torn rotator cuff tendon as it is detached from the bone shown here. Here is a nice view of the torn rotator cuff tendon and the exposed underlying bone. Next, an arthroscopic bird device is inserted to flatten the undersurface of the acromion, remove any curved bone or bone spurs in this area to prevent future impingement on the rotator cuff. This portion of the procedure is known as an acromioplasty. After the acromioplasty is complete, you can see there is a flat, bony acromial surface. Next, the rotator cuff is viewed from another angle to get a better perspective on the tear. Then the arthroscopic burr will be reinserted to freshen up the bony surface of the humeral head and to remove all soft tissue debris in this area. The goal is to create a bleeding bone surface which will maximize the ability of the tendon to heal down to the bone once the repair is completed.
Here you can see the prepared rotator cuff footprint, which will serve as the attachment site for the rotator cuff after the repair is complete. There is a nice smooth bleeding bone surface. Next, an all type device is used to create a hole in the bone where a suture anchor will be inserted. The anchor is a screw that has suture materials loaded into it. Here the awl is removed and the suture anchor device will be screwed into the socket. After the screwdriver handle is removed, you will be able to see the two white and two blue stitches which will be used to perform the rotator cuff repair. The screw is fully seated and the handle is removed and there are the sutures. Next, this instrument is used to pass suture through the undersurface of the rotator cuff tissue and onto the top surface of the rotator cuff tendon. Here you will see one of the white sutures being fired through the rotator cuff tissue. All four sutures will be passed in this manner in anticipation of knot tying. The two blue sutures are tied to one another using an arthroscopic knot tying technique as is shown here. As the knot is secured, you can see how the rotator cuff tendon is pulled down to the bone on the humeral head. After the blue knot is completely tied, the white sutures will be tied in a similar fashion in the front of the repair. After both knots are tied, you can see how the rotator cuff tendon has been reduced or pulled down to the bone. The previously seen gap in the rotator cuff is no longer visible. Then the all type device is reinserted and is used to punch holes into the bone of the humeral head to create vents that allow bone marrow to seep out of. The bone marrow brings growth factors and healing elements which increase the likelihood for successful rotator cuff repair healing. The yellowish Droplets represent bone marrow seeping out of the bone marrow vents. Then the four suture limbs are secured on the edge of the bone using another screw type device. As this device is screwed into the bone, the suture limbs are tensioned, applying compression onto the top of the rotator cuff tendon down to the underlying bone. Compressing the rotator cuff tendon in this manner provides increased stability to the repair and increases the likelihood for successful rotator cuff healing. Here you can see the tension and the sutures being applied. The screw device is being inserted. After the screw is fully inserted, the screwdriver handle will be removed. Then the excess suture is cut using an arthroscopic scissor type device as is shown here. Here is the completed rotator cuff repair showing the previously detached tendon compressed securely onto the underlying bone of the humeral head. This slide shows the detached rotator cuff tear on the left and the same area after the rotator cuff repair has been completed on the right. This completes the arthroscopic rotator cuff repair surgery. Thank you very much for your attention.